first gives us an actual budget. You guys are all working within these confines, so I thought we'll kind of like boring go through this, but it'll help you out a little bit. So they've got, you have these in front of you. I do have it on the top here. Let's see if I can use this. So here are the expenses that they go ahead and start putting together. What's really important, two things, whoever's responsible for budget in your team, there's an Excel spreadsheet version of this and you can modify it any way you like. But if you're not like poking into budgeting things, use what they've got, there's nothing wrong with it. So there are fixed costs, which they mention here, your program fees, whoever your, uh, you know, whoever your parent organizations are, will probably taking care of some of these expenses for you. But I want you to actually see the numbers, right? That's what we're going through here. Um, you don't have an international one, at least not at this point. Um, your communication set, your control pods, your competition set, tools. The ones before tools are all fixed costs. Tools, parts and supplies, Tournament registration is a fixed cost, and your state um, fees are a fixed cost. So let's talk about tools and miscellaneous parts and supplies. For those of you who have gone through the system, I know we have at least two different types in the room, right? So in one case, you get a budget. You are not allowed to spend over this much money, right? In another case, you may have a situation where you can spend what you like, but you better have raised the money first. If the money's not in the bank, you can't spend it. Fair enough? Anybody in the room? What's the last time you guys bought a tool? Specifically for robotics. A couple days ago. What did you buy? We bought a kit of parts. A kit of parts. So roughly how much money did you spend? $200. $200, well, there you go. Now, according to this, what does that mean? You're out of money. You're out of money, exactly. You can't spend anything else, right? But this is important because you agree to these numbers. But you can change these numbers. These numbers are not fixed, right? This is the part I want you to get through. So you got a kit, right? But what if you went out and you were like, Hey, Dad. Hey, Mom. Can I raid your garage? I need a couple of screwdrivers. I need a couple of this. I need a couple of that. I need a couple of whatever. How much money left? Probably not so much, right? So this winds up being what they call a gift in kind contribution. Gift in kind contributions do not normally fall into your budget. It is, in simple language, we simply call it a donation. But those items still have value, right? And now you need to track the value of those items. If I go over to Menards and I buy a screwdriver and I buy, I don't even know what they sell these days, if I buy a, a high-end Craftsman Last Forever, right, screwdriver, I'm out, I don't know, 10 bucks. But if we've been using that screwdriver in some other setting for the last 20 years, because Craftsman has a lifetime warranty, they used to, and now someone gives me a Craftsman screwdriver. Is it still worth 10 bucks? You're all supposed to say no really loudly. This wasn't a trick question. Is it still worth 10 bucks? No. no. Hey, excellent. All right, now we're making some progress. It's not. It saves you $10. It saves you $10. Hmm? It saves you $10. But it saves you $10. Right, so you have $10 that you can use on something else. And that's where we talk about these differences and the nuances, but they're important when you put them in your budget. What is even more important is that when you're standing in front of judges, you can explain that. Well, how much money did you actually spend for said category? Well, cash on the table, we spent this much. In-kind donations, we got a value of maybe this much. There are websites out there where you can actually calculate the donation value of a particular item or a particular tool that you have. So this is valuable to demonstrate to judges that you actually know what you're talking about when it comes to valuing things. Okay? Same thing goes for miscellaneous parts and supplies. And this again kind of ties back into how much fundraising is allowed by your organization. How much fundraising can you do? Because you may work with an organization that says, I don't know, whatever you can do. $50,000, I'm sorry, I just dropped it out of five. 
what's the likelihood of getting $50,000 out of our community for this topic? Not likely. It was getting a little uncomfortable, right? I got 20000 to get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this a couple years after you graduate? Yeah. yeah, okay. And this is somebody else you should know going forward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there, there's, there's kind of your thing. So you're sitting there, and you need to figure out realistically, it's easy to say, oh, I want the top of the line of everything. But realistically, you've got to know where your funding is coming from before you can make obligations like that. All right? So moving on here. Oh, these are some of my favorite categories. So these guys give you a budget if your team wants to purchase additional scoring elements. They don't have to do this. There are lots of other things that you can do. And usually those kits come out pretty early in the season, but this is up to you. Um, and then of course, that's all. so let's talk about gas and food. This is something that's kind of driven me nuts over. I've been involved with first robotics of some variety for I guess about 10 years. So when we talk about gas and food, when do we use gas? Driving. Driving. Where are we driving to? Tournaments. Where else are we drive to? Meetings. Qualifiers. Meetings, meetings, good. Yeah. Driving to find sponsors. Oh, driving to find sponsors for 20,000, okay. All of these are specifically robotics related gas expenses, right? Food. Because we're robotics teams that don't eat. Is that the way that works? No, so when do we need food payments? When we're at the shop for 12 hours. Now we start going, okay, there we go, that'll work, right? When we're at? competitions, meets, tournaments, and all of this kind of stuff. Okay, so these are their budgets. Now I want you to think, because I want you, really want you to like analyze these topics. So $200 for food. How many meets do you usually go to? How many people are on your team? How much, how many meals are you not at home for? How much does it cost for an average meal? Anybody over $200 yet? Yeah. We all should be over $200, right? Because who else comes along? Probably your drivers, who are frequently your parents. Yes. Coaches, exactly. And car drivers. <laughs> so, so these numbers, which is why they're asterisks, right? They're starred. Vary. They vary greatly. Right now, we're having a little quiz. I want to come up with five ways that you don't have to pay for food when you're at a competition. Yes? Bring your own food. Bring your own food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say we're going to implement this, right? We're going back to the IS decision matrix. There's risks that come with stealing food. Okay, what else? Little Caesars. Little Caesars, cheap. Cheap for food, yes. Don't eat. Don't eat. Starvation diet for food, yes.